I have to get gas at some point. Um, you know, there's one thing I hate most in life. It's getting gas. But getting gas you don't like? Uh, everything about it. Hate it. Just hate it. You have to stand there and wait. That whole minute and a half it takes to fill the car. Yeah. With the great termination looming on the horizon, what should employers consider? The very fact that you're characterizing it as the great termination I, is, is something that I think a lot of people are yet unaware. Uh, there are a number of experts who truly believe the great termination is coming. Uh, we have reason to believe that's accurate. Um, so the great resignation is indeed, as you suggest, morphing into the great termination. So if the great termination indeed occurs, employers, of course, will be on the hook for significant severance obligations unless they've limited those obligations pursuant to an employment agreement. But if they haven't, you're typically looking at up to 24 months of severance. So the question you know employers are going to ask is they're going to say, well, hold it a second. This ramification or consequence of the pandemic and the supply chain issues, etc. We're not at fault for any of that and we're suffering dire economic circumstances as a result. In other words, it's not our fault. So shouldn't that be a factor in the court determining what the reasonable notice or severance entitlement is for employees? And the short answer is regrettably no. It would be a rarity for a court to consider the dire economic circumstance of an employer as a factor in reducing the reasonable notice or severance entitlement that the employee has. So if it's not something you've got in your employment agreement, mitigating your exposure, then as an employer, you're going to be challenged during this up and coming great termination. You know what else I hate more than getting gas? Being with somebody who is getting gas? <laughs> <laughs> Correct.